pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everyone. Uh, future board meetings, our next board meeting uh, on March 8th will be at 5 instead of 6 to accommodate the lunch time that we usually do in the first meeting of March. Uh, March 22nd at 6 p.m. and then in April we're already going to meet on the 26th. That's also at 6 p.m. Revision agenda. We have a couple under HR and one under recognition and we'll get right to the recognition. Public recognition. We have a recommendation to approve a $500 donation from Zoomers RV of Indiana for Sharp Creek Robotics Program. And that's it. On, sorry. Go ahead. I said, and that's it on the donations. I move to accept the donation. I'll second that. Motion and second to approve the donation. All in favor, say aye. 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 School recognition. Mr. Snyder. Can I? How about if I go first? Sure. And then I'll let Mr. Snyder do his, okay. and then we'll do our main event with our spotlight tonight. All so, right. um, I have quite a few. And I don't know if I'll read every single name, but if I do, I apologize if I mispronounce some of them. But we'll start out Southwood. Um, we'd like to recognize uh, Benjamin Rodebush, 2019 South graduate, for being named to the President's List for the Fall 2021 term at Trine University. Rodebush is majoring in Computer Science and Information Technology to earn President's List honors. Trine University students must complete a minimum of 12 hours and have a grade point average of 3.75 to 4.0. So way to go, Ben. And from Miss Neen um, at Southwood, congratulations to the students listed um, below for making the 2022 Wabash County Honors Band. These students will perform at the Honeywell Center in the Ford Theater on March, Friday, March 11th at 7.30 p.m. alongside other selected students from Northfield, Wabash, and Manchester. Please make sure you congratulate them when you see them in the hallways in class. And I won't read all of those at this time, but we do um, make these, uh, they go to the, the media and they will, um, print all those out. Also, I will go to Southwood. It's very proud to announce that Xavier Miller, 2021 Southwood graduate, recently successfully completed his field training exercise and received his cross rifles from the Army. Way to go, Xavier. And then from Miss Nee, uh, also a long list and successful day at the vocal, vocal solo and ensemble district contest. The students did a great job and represented Southwood Junior Senior High very well. If you see any students listed below in the class or the hallways, please Make sure you congratulate them. We ended up with 14 golds and three silvers. So I will read um, the ones that earned the gold here. Emma Adams, uh, Sylvia Bakehorn, uh, no, there we go. Brindley Galvin, Jordan Hartline, Fritz Kirk, Emily Lockard, Mackenzie Mormon, Caitlin <coughs> Mann, Lindsay Silvers, Sarah Smith, Natalie, uh, and Natalie, and is anybody well in this? Yes. And Zora Watkins. And so earn a gold rating in group one will be attending the state. And so these are uh, large ensemble, Adams ensemble, there's several of those, and also the Ingle ensemble. And we had several that uh, earned the silver. And then we had a perfect score by Miss Watkins um, for getting a perfect score on her vocal solo this afternoon. And it is very hard to get uh, perfect in those. And she'll be moving on then uh, to state next week at Perry Meridian. Uh, on Friday, February, oh, that's yours. I have one more for Southwood before we go to Mr. Wood. Southwood was represented by Sarah Smith, Lindsay Silvers, and Caitlin Rank at Saturday's uh, ISMA Vocal State Cons uh, Ensemble Contest at Perry Meridian High School. All three girls did an outstanding job on their respective solos and earned a rating of either gold or gold with distinction, so awesome job there. Metro North Elementary, on February 11th, we had the second Metro North Valentine's Day VIP breakfast. We had over 525 guests enjoy a delicious breakfast with their Valentine's. Breakfast was prepared by our amazing uh, Metro North cafeteria staff and our Metro North teachers helped with serving and hosting. Thank you to all who helped make this morning so memorable for all of our families. Um, also, um, after final round of judging, four of the six Metro North finalists have been awarded the Gold Ribbon Award for their Symphony and Color Artwork. This is the highest honor given, and only 36 gold 
ribbons were awarded from all of the statewide submissions. Congratulations to Millie Siders, uh, Ava Mills, Faith Greer, and Heather Zwiebel. In addition to Metro North and Shark Creek students receiving these accolades for their hard work, Mrs. Katie Gray, our Metro North and Shark Creek art teacher, will receive um, another award. This award is presented every year to an art teacher with the most students receiving gold ribbon awards. So that's quite an honor. Mrs. Gray has 10 students receiving this distinction. I should also note that she submitted 12 pieces of student artwork. Congratulations to Mrs. Gray. Also at Metro North, robotics team had their last regular competition of the season on Saturday, and they were amazing. They were all day at matches, but in the end, we made it into the finals and placed fifth in a field of 48 teams. Our second graders were competing with other teams that may have sixth grade students, proving that Metro North team can definitely hold their own. The team also received the Think Award, a special recognition from judges that applauds our team's ability to write code, problem solve, work flexibility, and collaborate. So congratulations to all of those. From Shark Creek, they want to celebrate students um, in different, uh, Ms. Hughes, Adeline Hawkins, Ms. Black, Ms. Leonard, and Ms. Turner, and Tegan Baird being selected on the 2022 Symphony and Color Contest School Finals. These six students were also named exhibition finalists, which means that they're in the top 100 statewide. And to top this off, all six Sharp Creek students have earned a gold ribbon award for their artwork. This is the highest of honors for this contest. It's awarded to only 36 artworks in the state of Indiana. So congratulations to them. And again, Katie Gray. Sharp Creek raised $2,026 for the Leader Dog Fundraiser in the Urbana Alliance Club and adding $500 to that, so the total raise was, it doesn't add up. <laughs> so it might be 2,526, but it says on here 2,026. Shark Creek will be sponsoring three leader dog uh, dog puppies, Lucky, Snickers, and Jacks. Mrs. Riggle's class raised the most money and they received an ice cream party provided by the Lions Club. Mrs. Brown's, Mr. Brown's class came in second, Mrs. Ross came in third. The K kids would like to thank the entire school community for supporting this fundraiser. Sharp Creek would also like to congratulate all of the uh, robotics for the recent strong showings. Uh, Sharp Creek hosted the Walbridge County Blended Finals on February 11th. The Blue Norse Bots Team A and Southwood Circuit Knights placed first in the Teamwork Challenge. Additionally, the Norse Bots A won the Skills Award. Uh, North spots, white, gray, and black, all placed in the top four in skills. And so on February 12th, they competed in the Cinewall, and they also did very well there, too. And I believe Mr. Snyder is up. All right. So Friday, February 11th, so it's been a couple weeks ago, at the Bluffton game, the NHS boys received an exemplary behavior report from... Your name goes there at the back of the Is it better? Is it what? Anyway, from an official, Beecham. Reported the team, including all players and coaching staff, showed tremendous sportsmanship the entire game. Even after being called for violations, they would run over and hand the ball to the official. They were helping opponents up off the floor, very respectful. You can tell that everyone has bought in as it was through and through the entire team. Hopefully the fans will see what the kids and coaching staff are doing, which in light of recent events Sunday, <laughs> I, think it means even more. I mean, they're seeing on the news, you know, coaches smacking other people and starting brawls. And, you know, Northfield hasn't had the most successful season. We're in transition. We're getting better. The kids are playing hard, working hard for their coach, doing a great job. That's good to hear because it's harder to have good sportsmanship when you've had a rougher season than it is when you're winning all the time. And uh, so I think in light of recent events, that's even more kudos to the high school kids for showing the college coaches and players how to act after games and during games. For Mr. Johnston, the choir teacher, he had choir students participate in the Isla District Solo and Ensemble Contest on Saturday, February 12th at Carroll High School in Fort Wayne. They are in three gold ratings, four silver ratings, Seventh graders Emma Wilson, Trinity Thor, and Landon Mast all participated. Landon received a perfect score. Acapella choir members Caden Cruz, Anna Hodson, and Addie Brandt sang an ensemble. Addie Brandt sang a solo, earning a gold rating to advance to the state contest held on Saturday, February 19th. Congratulations to all of them. 
We also had the uh, Northfield students make, make the Wabash County Honors Band and Choir. They'll be playing at Ford Theater on March 11th with all the other Wabash County schools. Those band members are Landon Shu, Claire Thompson, Haley Barton, Turner Stevens, Isaiah Beal, Madison Griffin, Alexis Level, John Nessler, Kyle Wynn, and Natalie Keller. We also have the Honor Choir students joining them, Caden Cruz, Anna Hodson, Addie France, and Jasmine Kelly. And then we had the art teacher enter some Northfield students into the Huntington University Art Show, and they had a high school exhibit there. And a lot of this stuff has been posted on our school Facebook too. So Asia Miller got honorable mention for her sculpture, Break Free. Good job, Asia, who happens to be here. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> Kenya Barris had photography, Ethan Sloan photography, Jessica Ray mixed media, Emma Bone drawing, Avery Napier drawing, Lane Denton ceramics, May Napier and JC Crump also did ceramics. And then I also wanted to say congratulations to Hannah Holmes and Emily Pennington, they made the uh, conference, um, all conference team in Ainsley Dale honorable mention for girls basketball this year. So a lot of stuff wrapping up and finishing up over the winter. Sorry if I left anything out, try to hit it on here. You did a good job. Asia, I'm glad I put you down since you're here. Who else? <laughs> Thank you. So next, we're going to go to um, the school resource officer uh, spotlight, and not necessarily just because he's a school resource officer, but because he was spotlighted. And so, if I could have Asia and Officer Kirkland to come up here, because you will be on Facebook Live, so have to stand about right here, <laughs> right there. So we will get you all and get out of the picture. So anyway, um, every month or every school board meeting, we do this, and this. This um, time, we actually had Asia Miller, who is a, what, what year are you in now? Mm -hmm. Junior at Northwood Junior Senior High School, who nominated um, Officer Kirkland. And also we had someone else, another staff member, and I'll read that after um, Asia kind of talks about uh, why you nominated Officer Kirkland. So you're on the floor. You got it. Okay. So I nominated Officer Kirkland because I felt like he deserved the spot the most because he just fits the spot at Northfield as a resource officer the best because he acts like a child half the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, not what it says here. <laughs> so it fits in with so he fits in with like the rest of the students. And then and he just like makes every student act like a human, like treats them like a human. And um he just makes the school better because he brings out everybody's true personalities and he just Okay. Very good. And I will say then, so um, Amy Powell, who is one of our bus drivers, and she is also <laughs> one of our paraprofessionals at Northfield, she also nominated um, Eric Kirkland. And so I will read what she has to say. She said she was not able to come tonight because she has um, one of her children at an event. So it says, um, SRO Kirtland does so much extra work. He constantly helps bus drivers, making kids smile in the hallways. And he's underappreciated for sure. He has worked extra helping with safety measures and making sure kids get to class on time. He has formed wonderful relationships with students across the schools that I hope will never be forgotten. He is a great listener and always there right when you need him. He has helped so many of our, my students. I am very thankful for him. So on behalf of MSD of Wabash and also uh, our sponsor, First Farmers Bank and Trust, let's give Officer Kirtland a round of applause. Why don't you just stand next to me? There you go. And then, and then because I don't want to get a picture. There we go. Get a, <laughs> there you go. Got okay. it. Are you got it already? Yeah. Okay. So we've asked everybody, we've asked everybody to go ahead and read the card first. So I'll read the card. Okay. It says, Congratulations. Because you have dreamed big and worked hard, we figured you might like a soft place to rest. Thank you for doing what you do so well. The staff spotlight. So what is in there then? Oh. <laughs> it is uh, a silky smooth mink touch luxury blanket. <laughs> We've never had anybody read that yet. So that's <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm like, well, I'm not just going to say it's a blanket. Yeah. <laughs> 
subscribe. I think it might have something on there about MSD. Oh, yeah, it says uh, Dream Big, Work Hard, MSD of Wabash County. Yeah. Stamp so of course this doesn't. You don't use that during the school day, though. You to make sure. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes you get a little tired. <laughs> All right. So thank you. Hey, thank you very much for nominating him, and thank you for coming tonight. I appreciate it. Yes. And let's thank give you. him a round of applause. Thank you very much. <laughs> and like I put in the email, you are welcome to stay, or you may leave. So <laughs> well. Uh, you probably expect to go for supper. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So I think that concludes the public recognition. So we're going to move on to public comment for agenda items only. And we'll give a minute or so to catch a minute. We'll let Facebook Live catch up. Let's see if anybody's coming there. There are a couple of comments. Um, I think it's from Amber Bretzman. She wanted to add Sharp Creek Robotics. Good news that Team A and Team D won automatic state bids. And so Team D won an excellence award, which is the highest award you can give a team. And Team B won a design award for their engineering notebook. Team A is currently ranked 14th in the state out of 553 teams. And she's afraid she might have left that off what she sent to Mr. Martin. So that might be why she had to share that. Later. Well, so Mrs. Bretzman, uh, that's one that's when you don't, he has it on here. And now that I see that, it's a fun fact that she said. So I appreciate she, her saying all that because that's something I probably should have highlighted um, with the other things. There's just a lot of information on that little box. The box when we do it in Excel, it's a little harder to read all that and scroll back and forth. So, And she also wanted to thank Southwood Elementary for hosting the league this year. She knows how much work it was setting up and tearing down, and she appreciated the hard work of Erica Tyson and Amy Schmidt. All right, we'll move on to the consent agenda items. Um, we need approval of the minutes from our last board meeting on February 8th. So moved. Second. Motion and second to approve the minutes from our last meeting. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Claims. I would accept claims. Second. Motion and second to approve claims. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, payroll. Uh, nothing new on payroll. Uh, probably see anticipated uh, increases uh, just with the winter sports claims coming in as the season ends. Motion to approve the payroll. So, so, motion and second to approve payroll. One favor, say aye. Aye. Financial summary. So, um, I gave you uh, a, a first forecast of what the education fund and operation funds cash flow uh, could possibly look like throughout the year. And obviously, this is something that ebbs and flows each month as things change and come out and so the education fund for 2022 currently shows the expenses reflected at uh, with the estimated cost based off of trends in current teacher contract obligations it does not reflect any potential wage increase at this time um, it also reflects revenue that's estimated based off of past trends and it also does reflect the basic grant revenue showing September 2021 ADM counts and December special ed counts throughout the entire year. We just recently had uh, an ADM count for February, so that money is not reflected in this uh, at this point in time, as well as any July estimates that we have to provide to the state that they base our last six months of funding off of. 
uh, and then which would also lead to the September actual ADM counts for that year as well. So it's pretty vanilla at this time as far as the cash flow is concerned uh, and represents, like I said, uh, basic trends from previous years with that. And then for the operations fund, uh, you're looking at similar type of information. Uh, it does uh, not base off of any potential wage increases for expenses at this point in time this year. We are actually looking at uh, wage increases when it comes to uh, things that might come out of the operation fund uh, for our classified and administrative staffs. Um, and then, like I said, most of the uh, other expenses and revenue are just based off of past trends. Do the state of justice any on the updated ADM? They do. Mm -hmm. um, okay. They do not do that until I believe um, April, May, and June. I think those are the three months that they reconcile, reconcile the count from February. So that's why it's not reflected currently. Were they going to do away with that sometime, or we're going to continue to do that? The second count. Yeah. yeah. The second count. Yes. Yeah. yeah. At one point, it used to be two counts, and it was one count, and then they went back to two counts. And there's not been any talk or even legislation about changing. Yeah. Okay. And there's been two counts for quite a while, but at first they were just seeing what the counts were, but it was money wasn't tied right. to it. Right. And then they went to it, and they took it away, and that was legislated back then. So, okay. Chris, there's pretty decent growth in this operations fund projection. <coughs> Do you see anything where we would be changing the transfer? into the education funding or changing that percent? I just wonder. So uh, as so there could be room to change that percentage. And what I mean by that is the percentage could possibly go lower um, from that standpoint. The the increases that we're starting to see now are because we've paid off that self-insurance fund. So mm -hmm. our transfers are no longer like as large as what they were in the past. So that now has freed up our operation fund for more operational type expenses. And we had the energy savings. That came back yeah, up a while ago. Yeah. So in That's reality, this can help us continue to do things with our buildings and maintaining some of those areas um, that maybe have been deferred. Uh, because there wasn't the availability to do that, we were always doing that through bonds. The bonds have helped this some too, though, because of capital project. Because we've been taking, we did right. taking those costs out of the bonds, yeah. but eventually some of those are going to have to go back into the operation fund. That yeah, looks good. That's all I really had with that. Um, somebody jinxed us, though, I think a, maybe a few board meetings ago, saying that we didn't have to worry about any snow removal. <laughs> <laughs> I think that might have yeah. been Kevin. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like all we've been doing here lately. So. <laughs> well, you're ready this week. <laughs> yeah, well, it doesn't snow anymore. <laughs> right. Expensive. Yeah. Make you bring a tractor up for free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Be ready Thursday night, Friday morning. <laughs> yeah. All right. We'll move on to personnel under resignation. We have Nicole Powell, her professional at Metro North Elementary, uh, and Wendy Lynn, bus driver for the North, and Callie Baker, social worker for Sharp Creek Elementary. Um, under employment, we have Tim Smith. Custodian at Sharp Creek Elementary. And for Northfield Spring Coaches, we have the following Kyle France, head softball, Jeff Crum, volunteer softball, Nicholas Galati, volunteer softball, Matt Trider, volunteer softball, Tori Schaefer, head baseball, Stan Cox, assistant baseball, Greg Tomlinson, Braden Ripplinger, Matt Burkhart, Joseph Mitchell, all assistant baseball. Heather Hyden, 
head track, Scott Hopper volunteer track, Krista Hoover assistant track, Larry Vaughn assistant track, Dick Fleming assistant track, Colin Dawes head boys golf, Anthony Sorg head junior high golf, Marion Milam head tennis, and Casey Dyson assistant tennis. Southwood spring coaches, Steve Swinson head baseball, Corey Blocker, Dan Lloyd, Christian Dieter, all uh, no, Corey Blocker and Dan White, assistant baseball, Christian Dieter is the JV baseball coach. Uh, Gary Dale, head golf. Carl Pace, head softball. Uh, Chad Lambert, Gary Marion, Tabitha Klein, all assistant softball. Cynthia Bell, head tennis. Taylor Leg, assistant tennis. Tanya Boone, head track. Jeff Pinnacle and Kerry Hamill, assistant track. Jeff Hobson, junior high track. Daniel Bosis, junior high track, Natalie Hunter, junior high track, and Devin Dale, assistant golf. And that is the entire state of personnel. Thanks for listening to the junior high track, if anybody's interested. <laughs> <laughs> I moved to the slate. Second. So the second to approve personnel, I'll play your side. Aye. Our Lynn Career Center report, Matt. We had a meeting. Last week, uh, they had a little bit of an update on the EDA grant. They're still trying to work out the concerns with the higher ups in Chicago and stuff like that. And so there's no real news on that. Um, except that Perkins, Perkins assessment grant of $7,600, and that's just to help to get that every year. Uh, Mr. Hobbs reported there were 67 positive students from the beginning of the year of COVID. And that's it. Pretty boring. Uh, and then Hartman Career Center scholarships, they give out, you know, from the rental money, and they give out, I think, $1,000. So it'd be like eight of them. So they want to make sure that the counselors, guidance counselors, have all that information. Because there was two or three from last year that are not going to be awarded because they ended up, they got awarded, but they didn't go to school. Mm -hmm. Didn't take their, so instead of being 8000 it's going to be like 11000 Mm -hmm. like that. So put that in front of the guidance counselors and have those kids. Yeah, we'll be getting emails and they yeah. let them know. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. Superintendent's report. Yeah, yeah, I just want to mention uh, yeah, computers. <clears throat> computers. I say. I want to mention that our ADM, Dr. Kuhn, did mention about that. So we did have that certified, and we have great news that our total ADM, we increased uh, 74 uh, students, and that's great. Um, a lot of schools don't necessarily increase from uh, fall to spring. And also then, just to give you a little bit more data, from spring 2021 to spring 2022, uh, we were up 24 and a half. So not only did we increase from fall to spring, we still increased 24.5 from last spring to this spring. So that's very good news. That's what I want to add as far as that goes. Report. Yeah, I shared with you guys an NWA report. Um, it looked at, yeah, there we go. Um, it looks at kids' test scores from winter of 21 through winter of 22. And so this data is actually specific to the kids that took the test. And so all the kids that we have in 2022, it only takes their data um, and compares it to the ones of 21. So if somebody that came or gone, they weren't included in that. And it's always nice to look at some of the highlights there. So 174 students during that year grew at 90th percentile as across the whole entire country. And so um, we're all about growth. We feel like that's the best thing we can focus on. When a kid comes in, we meet them where they're at and help them grow. And so that's about 26%, 27% of our kids um, grew on either test, reading or math. And then of those, then the 31, this is even more shocking. So these kids grew at the 90th percentile, but then they also scored at the 90th percentile. So these are your high flying, high achieving kids that still grew compared to other students that scored that high. And so um, just lots to celebrate there. Um, I might pause, are there any questions that all kind of make sense? And this is NWA data, so we get it back very quickly once we take it, um, pretty reliable. Everybody feels pretty comfortable with it. And so then underneath that, uh, I try to find classes that do well. And so um, 
you can see the school and the grade level. And so the entire sixth grade at Sharp Creek from last year, this year, those kids as fifth graders to sixth graders grew at the 90th percentile compared to other fifth and sixth graders across the country. And so just some really exciting things down there. And as you scroll down the reading there in third and fourth grade, lots of growth. And so lots of things to celebrate. Underneath that, of course, there's always things to be concerned about. And we are seeing some issues of reading growth in our primary levels, primary B, K, one, two, three. And so uh, we are addressing that. Um, we're working with teachers and principals. Um, and it's not, it's not dramatic and it's not scary, but it's just enough to let us know that we've got our work there. There's an area that needs some attention. And so one of the strategies we'll use to help support that is, uh, I'm sure Dr. Kuhn or Mrs. Boone, somebody will bring up summer school. I might be speaking ahead of my turn here, but we're going to offer summer school again for K123 kids, just like we did last year. It was kind of, uh, Mrs. Moore coined the great phrase, it was summer school on steroids. Um, and we're going to do that again. We're going to use extra dollars to set aside to pay teachers to come in to work with their classes. And we feel like just that extra four or five weeks with those uh, kids will make a big difference. And so, um, so yeah, yeah, that's the latest update. I don't usually get to share that, so I'm glad I got this. Thing. You find this a lot more reliable than like the ice death. Yeah, it's just consistent, right? NWA has been doing this for probably since Mr. Keefaber was in school. <laughs> wow. Really? <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe not that long. Okay. No, it's been around for forever, and uh, and it's got a huge a number of participants. I mean, they test across the country. It's consistent, and so yeah, we do find that very reliable. Um, it's unfortunate it doesn't meet some kind of federal requirements to be a part of the testing, or at least that's how the department interprets it. So otherwise, we use that instead of I learn. Um, and I learn might be good, but we're only on our second year of it, right? So there's just so much to work out, whereas end of the days have been there and done that. This is a formative assessment where you actually can form the instruction, whereas the summative at the end of the year is after over, those kids are going to another class and, and all those different things. So um, most schools would say that they would rather have this as their state assessment. Then it turns over quick too. You're not waiting six months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Getting it back. To, so I told you we have the data there that says that, and so we're already able to address that now while they're with us, rather than next year when they're forever. Yeah. yeah. So when you took that test, was that the feather pen and the ink well? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually like a stone tablet. <laughs> I was trying to make you a little younger. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll move on to new business. Under new new business. We have a recommendation to approve the continuation of using the Food to School Purchasing Cooperative for 2022-2023. Yeah, so this is an annual renewal um, just based off of when they have their um, meetings and determine which uh, procurement uh, vendors and things like that that they're going to select and then allow us to select um, to be a part of that. So we've been a part of this group since 2019. Um, it's done well for us. Uh, we would like to continue um, to use the co-op for our purchasing procurement for uh, MSC for the 2022-2023 school year. Move to continue on with the cooperative. Mm -hmm. Motion second to approve continuation of using the food school purchasing co-op for the next school year. All in favor say aye. Aye. And now we have the recommendation to approve the second update to the re-entry plan and supplement 2021-2022 regarding contact tracing and quarantine. Mr. Keith Faber, I'll speak to that. Yes. So first of all, we did have a re-entry plan that we started out with. Then we had a supplement to the re-entry plan. <laughs> then we had an update to both of those. And so that's why this is called the second update to the re-entry plan and supplement for 2020-2021-2022. Can't say that very well right now. So contact tracing and quarantine. So as it mentioned here, um, the Indiana State Department of Health no longer recommends contact tracing and quarantine in schools effective tomorrow. Um, so it was perfect timing for us to have a board meeting on 2 22 I had to say that. That's kind of fun. Um, with this recommendation, MSD of Walvers County will no longer contract trace 
or quarantine close contacts beginning on February 23rd, 2022, if you approve this. Schools do not need to re report any COVID-19 cases information to the IDOH. School dashboard will be discontinued because that's what we've been doing all the time for a long, long time. So I'm not going to read the next part, but if an individual tests positive, it's no different than what he had before. But we want to reiterate that that's still happening. Um, if they are test positive, they need to quarantine for five days. They can come back to school with a mask for days six and ten, as long as um, their symptoms have subsided. And so, and they've been uh, fever-free for 24 hours uh, with uh, no medication uh, or fever-reducing medication. So with all other illnesses, students should not return to school unless they are fever free for at least 24 hours without the use of fever reducing medication and their symptoms are resolved. So I would like to recommend this and hope that you would uh, follow suit with that. I'll move to approve. Oh, sorry. Motion. And second to approve the second update to re-entry plan and supplement, taking away the requirement for contact tracing and quarantining of <laughs> asymptomatic people. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> We're still gonna go ahead and just cop that up. <laughs> Uh, under unfinished business, we have nothing. Board policy, nothing. Public comment on anything. Let's uh, give them time to count, uh, count up. Everybody. Okay. Public comment there. And any items from board members? Okay, we're adjourned.